Okay, we're rolling. <laughs> Hi, Leo. I figure instead of writing a, uh, a long, crazy description of my steel pan, I would just make a little video and uh, maybe make it more entertaining for people to watch or not watch or whatever you wanted to do. So this is my drum. And uh, same one you saw in the video. It is a, a C lead uh, made by Pan Yard uh, in Akron, Ohio in 1998. So the drum is, uh, is uh, officially a teenager now, 13 years old. And giving me all sorts of problems. Uh, um, as you may notice, I've got three circles in here. I, I had six notes in here, uh, high up in my top note. And uh, on one of my previous tunings, I had uh, Shelly Irvine, who uh, was a founder at Panyard. Uh, he retuned it, retuned my whole drum, and said, you know, these, these notes up here aren't working as well as they could. Uh, let me take them out and put in three new notes. So, you know, I, I was on my way driving there. I was on the Ohio Turnpike. And uh, he's telling me this on my cell phone as I'm going to pick it up. So I don't even know which notes he's taking out. It's like, I'm going to take out a couple. And he took out six and put these in there. But but this is right before they started making the solid hoops. It was right after they started etching all the notes. So uh, I, I've been told by numerous sources, people who worked on my pan and, and, and uh, other things, that you know, this is probably one of the better drums of this era that they made. Um, you know, I, I'll play coil drums or uh, uh, pretty much everyone who makes makes drums you know I, I play all their stuff at, at PASIC Percussive Art Society International Convention and if they're still pan manufacturer and they're there I'll, I'll play their drums and check them out and and even their their display pieces their show pieces um, my drum on its worst day blows all those away and, and you know this isn't even a solid hoop so I'm really really happy with my drum I'm really lucky to have such a high quality instrument um, the whole thing used to be chrome at one point, and uh, early on in the, the the process of owning this drum, I developed a buzz and a B, and they had to uh, weld the rim because that was before they were welding them. They were just crimping them. So in an email, I oh we we'll have to weld the rim. It'll destroy the chrome. We'll have to paint it. We suggest blue. It's a nice little paragraph in an email. I was like, what? Oh, okay, great. I guess. So luckily, blue is my favorite color. That was one thing. So I have a blue drum. And oddly enough, all the uh, the scratches and things that have ever happened to it have only ever happened in my studio, not on the road. <laughs> you know, the dangers of the studio. But uh, about a month and a half ago now, I had a little issue where uh, I was playing at a high-end country club and they had set up this wall uh, behind me uh, to kind of divide a room as for this big lobster bake for all their, their guests, members and stuff. And uh, I walked away from it after having just completed setting up People are almost ready to come in, and part of this wall falls. Hits my Bose Compact, which unfortunately I didn't have the uh, the, the, the L1 with me because I would have stopped it. And uh, so knocks that thing over, hits my drum, it falls over, you know, just like literally dominoes. It was that quick. And uh, I have a condenser mic that's underneath the drum attached to the stand. So when it hit, it landed on that essentially. I'm just like, oh, you know, watching my, my livelihood crash to the ground. Uh, right before the gig I'm supposed to play, you know, or a really good gig. So I'm quickly picking everything up, and I don't even want to play my drums. I know it's just, it's going to be horrible and ruined. But as I'm going around it, you know, it, it's pretty decent, pretty decent on the on the, the naturals. And I get over to the flats and the sharps, and I'm like, oh, it's getting worse, it's getting worse, it's getting worse. By the time I hit the, the F sharp, it was almost, it was almost like that. It was just completely destroyed. So I really couldn't play anything in D that whole night. And, uh, you know, even the C-sharp was, was getting pretty bad. So, you know, I'm just in this horrible state of mind playing this gig and just freaking out. And I'm sending texts and emails to all the people and tuners and things on Facebook, trying to find someone who's in the Midwest, who's, you know, around the area that uh, would be able to tune it. Cause I had a gig on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday the next day, and I just had Sunday the, the, the following day off. So uh, Steve Laurie who actually did the, the work on the B on it at, at Panyard when I had that buzz, he was playing in Muncie, which is uh, about, about three hours from where I live. And uh, he was heading back to Akron the next day. So we met in a parking lot in Fort Wayne. He stopped at Lowe's, picked up a hammer, and made them cut off the handle, or cut it real short so that he could you know tune it, which they didn't want to do, but he forced him into it, I guess, maybe with the hammer. And uh, it was, you know, filing down the edges of it and taping it as I pulled in just right after he did, actually, of this, this middle school parking lot. 
And uh, I had purchased a, a, a strobe tuner application on my iPhone, which helped pretty significantly. It's a pretty good tuner for 10 bucks. And, uh, you know, most of it, though, he did it by ear. He just had his one hammer, and he was just banging it out. And, you know, it, it doesn't sound great. You know, nowhere near where, where it used to. But it, I haven't had to do any work on it since then, and it, it got me through all my gigs since then. And, yeah, sure, I noticed it a little off on that side, but it doesn't bother me. You know, and, you know it was unplayable before that. So it's pretty remarkable. And incidentally, he's working on a 24-inch barrel drum that uh, will probably rival the solid hoops of the 26 inches of pan yard. And, you know, for a lot less money, probably around $3,000 instead of $5,000. And not waiting five years to get one, but waiting maybe a few months to get one. So uh, he's in the process of developing that. He actually had it set up next to mine and was comparing the two as he was tuning mine. Using his as more like a source tuner. And uh, I was really blown away by it, so I'm really interested in checking those out when they come out. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the drum. Uh, 1998, before the solid hoops, and, and now it's got <laughs> three black marks in there, which hopefully won't, won't wash off anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a percussionist, and uh, my background is in drum set and marimba, and a little bit of vibraphone. Uh, and so I try to make all my backing tracks authentic with with real stuff there's no drum machines and in, in anything i use except for the one tune that i wrote myself which is uh kind of a crazy thing that it's all drum machine uh for the percussion stuff behind me which is kind of weird i re-recorded it with real percussion stuff and i was just like i was just so used to the old version that i did back in uh 97 when i wrote the, the tune i just i just kept it i don't know it, it fits but the marimba is, is my marimba and uh yeah, I actually wrote it for uh, a student of mine, uh, another marimba player at the time, and she was a senior in high school, and she had to do a Spanish thing, and she said, hey, can you write me a, a marimba duet? We can play together. I was like, yeah, cool. So I played the accompaniment part. She played the lead part on another marimba, and it sounded really cool. Um, and then later, when I after I got my drum right after that, I was like, wow, that'd be great to play on this. And it took me a little while to figure out because I didn't know how to play the steel pan at all. Um, I knew how to play marimba. So, uh, yeah, I really like it. I, I've always had a, a, a lot of luck with that tune, you know, even if people are just completely oblivious to me playing in the background. Most of the time when I play that tune, I'll get a few, you know, smattering of applause somewhere. Um, and also, incidentally, for whatever the reason, it's my highest selling tune on iTunes. It, it's, it outsells Shake Snore or, or Under the Sea or Hot 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 or anything like that. And I sell quite a bit of stuff on iTunes, so... Um, it's really kind of mind-boggling. I don't really even know how people find it. So uh, I do all the mallet work on a Xylo synth. This is uh, just like a keyboard, only it's you know has Bobinga keys and yeah, you you play it like a marimba. Of course, it can be anything. It can be vibraphone, piano, guitar, whatever. And this is my very dirty trap cat right now. This is what I do all the drum set stuff on, uh, or percussion things, or or I can't actually use real percussion. You know, like my bongos or or whatnot, my Kunga drum. It's my very messy studio, by the way. But uh, yeah, my marimba is uh, highly underplayed because I play so much steel drum. And uh, my drum set, my real drum set, is in the basement. I have a Sonar Rosewood drum set that I'm starting to play more. I, I probably have played it five times this year. It's great. I feel awesome about it. Um, which is just horrible. I mean, I have this amazing snare drum on it uh solid bronze and copper plated and, and i barely ever get to play it so this is where all the work gets done this is my recording studio slash uh forum posting site and uh yeah it, it, it works for what i do you know for my level of expertise which is not not that high it, it does seem to work so uh yeah if you have any questions let me know uh feel free to put up a video of your own i'd love to hear your story about it what you do. And, uh, I, I played in a lot of bands before, you know, on, on regular kit and drum set. And of course, I've played in symphonies and orchestras and drum and bugle chorus and things. And, uh, but this is, this is really cool and different. Even today, you know, after eight years of doing this and, and almost 900 gigs, I'm still blown away that I get to play solo on something, so a melodic instrument. It's not just, you know, drum set, which is how I started off in life. And uh, it, it's, Wow, it's, it's cool. If only I could sing. <laughs>
All right. Have a good one. Thanks.